Did you know that it's incredibly common in a job interview to get a question about your approach to how you handle challenges, specifically challenges that are relevant to the role? Welcome to video number 12 in our 20-part video series focused in on questions and answers with a little bit of AI feedback. The purpose of these videos is all the same. So we're going to tackle a question. Uh, with a specific role at a specific company. We're going to cruise through that job description. I'm going to provide an overview slide for what I feel is the best approach to answering these types of questions. Then I'm going to provide what I think is a really good answer. We're going to run it through practiceinterviews.com, our AI tool, and see how we can enhance the answer, make it even better. We are going to tackle a specific question for a specific role at a specific company, but I want you to look at the foundation. How am I putting together the answer? Because if you can really figure out the foundational items, you're going to have success with any type of hypothetical question. So our question of the day, how would you handle dependencies, risks, and roadblocks in a complex technical program? So we're going to focus in on a role as a technical program manager at OpenAI. You may be more familiar with ChatGPT, but the overall platform is OpenAI. And we're going to look at a technical program manager specifically in their data platform. In all these videos, I am not going to read through the entire job description, but I'm going to scroll through it with a little bit of slowness in case you do want to pause this video and just learn a little bit more about what a TPM role would look like at OpenAI, but probably not a great use of our time for me to talk through this entire job description. Then we get to our method. I recommend that anybody answering any hypothetical question uses the CFAST method. We're going to come in, we're going to get a little bit of clarification. Then we're going to provide our framework. That's our outline. Then we're going to make some role specific assumptions. This starts to get them to picture us in the role. Then we're going to put it all together and come up with ideally multiple solutions to provide a really strong overall answer. So. Let's get back into the flow. Our question, how would you handle dependencies, risks, and roadblocks in a complex technical program? I'd want to know what is the primary goal of the program. I'd want to know what is the timeline, who is our target audience, and is the integration or optimization our primary goal? Which one? Uh, I would focus on goal setting, stakeholder management, risk management, dependency mapping, milestone planning, overall communication strategies. I'd look at process improvement, uh, technology integration, agile methodologies, and overall performance metrics in order to solve. My assumptions uh, are that we are focusing in on external infrastructure partners, notably Azure teams, who are considered clients whose needs and expectations must be managed alongside our internal goals. I'll focus on process improvement and technology integration and internal performance data and metrics will be utilized to measure progress and identify our areas for optimization. Lastly, Kubernetes will be our central technology for orchestrating containerized applications, improving scalability and deployment efficiency. So I think a good starting point would be discussing goal setting and stakeholder management, but is there another area you'd like to focus on first? Okay, focusing in on goal setting involves establishing clear measurable objectives for the program that align with OpenAI's broader mission and the specific needs of the applied team. This includes not only enhancing the data platform's scalability and reliability, but also ensuring it can support the evolving demands of ChatGPT and API products. Setting ambitious but achievable milestones will be crucial, requiring a deep understanding of the technical and operational challenges involved. This process must involve close collaboration with key internal stakeholders, so that could be eng leads and product managers, to ensure that our goals are aligned with technical capabilities and product roadmaps. Now, simultaneously, stakeholder management is essential for navigating the complexities of working with both internal teams and external partners like Azure. Effective communication strategies must be developed to keep all parties informed about the progress, specifically our project progress, changes, and decisions. This includes regular status updates, 
risk assessments, and feedback loops that allow stakeholders to contribute to the program's direction. Building strong relationships with our external partners will also be key to ensuring that we're aligned with all of OpenAI's objectives and committed to supporting the program's success. And in this context, managing dependencies across teams with external partners absolutely requires a proactive approach to identify potential bottlenecks or conflicts early on. By integrating technology solutions like Kubernetes, we can address scalability and deployment challenges, making the data platform more robust and responsive to change. The adoption of agile methodologies will support this flexibility, allowing the team to iterate and adapt as the program progresses. Now, we could focus more on goal setting and stakeholder management, huge areas to dive deeper into, or we could focus on risk management and dependency mapping. Do you have a preference? Okay, shifting our attention to risk management, it's imperative to establish a comprehensive framework for identifying, assessing, and mitigating risks associated with the program. So this involves creating a risk registry that documents potential threats to the program's objectives, including technical challenges, delays and deliverables from external partners, and resource constraints. Regular risk assessments will be conducted to update the risk registry and develop mitigation strategies. This proactive approach ensures that risks are managed before they impact the program's timeline or outcomes. Now, dependency mapping is another critical area as it helps in visualizing the relationships between different components of the program and identifying critical paths. By mapping out dependencies, we can better anticipate roadblocks and adjust our planning to accommodate or circumvent them. For example, understanding how the development timelines of internal teams align with the support schedules of external partners like Azure can prevent bottlenecks. This detailed mapping will also facilitate better resource allocation, ensuring that teams have what they need when they need it, thus avoiding delays in project or program milestones. Now, these strategies hinge on our assumptions about the importance of agile methodologies for flexibility and iterative process, the central role of a technology like Kubernetes for scalability, and the reliance on internal data to guide decision making. By focusing in on these areas, we can enhance our program management approach, ensuring that we do not only anticipate and mitigate risks, but also manage dependencies effectively to maintain project momentum. I'm happy to dive deeper into any of the concepts I mentioned earlier. We could move on to discussing success metrics, or is this a good stopping point? Okay, as always, deep breath, a hypothetical answer with no interaction from an interviewer feels incredibly long, but most of our hypothetical answers, they're going to be broken up. That's why we ask questions, pauses, we build in space. We have a lot of transition statements. So let's dive into the answer feedback. Let's see what practiceinterviews.com AI tool thought about our answer. Okay, it looks like we missed the opening statement. So consider using an open statement like, before I proceed, it's essential that I understand a few key details a bit more. Important to introduce to your interviewer that you are going to ask clarifying questions. Okay, clarifying questions. Your questions help clarify some points, but were not direct yes or no or either or questions. Try to rephrase them to be more specific and simpler to answer. For example, is the primary goal of the program clearly defined? Is the timeline fixed or flexible? Are the target users internal or external? Do we prioritize integration or optimization? And I think I, I did ask that last question, but this is just a little bit cleaner. And then the other questions I asked were more open-ended. We want to close those questions because it just increases the likelihood that the interviewer will actually answer us. Okay, and it says, additionally, it might be helpful to ask about the specific tools and technology to be used in the program, the availability of resources or personnel, and the primary metrics for measuring success of the program this will clarify the context and allow you to tailor your answer to the job-specific circumstances. Job-specific is critical in these hypothetical answers. Um, this would be a lot from a clarification perspective, but just good ideas and concepts to be thinking about. Okay, our transition before the framework. Utilize a transition statement like, let's explore how to handle dependencies, risks, and roadblocks within our complex technical program. 
yeah, there was no real transition there. I just kind of dove into the framework. Okay, for the framework, make sure each point you discuss serves a unique function and does not overlap with other points. If there are overlapping points, consider combining them into one important point. Okay. Alternatively, offer distinct and unique insights for each point to help differentiate them from one to another. Okay. For example, the point about agile methodologies and process improvement could be collapsed into a single process improvement. And then you should discuss how agile methodologies factor into process improvement. Okay, good. The goal of the framework or your overall outline it's broader concepts. We actually don't need to be that specific in the framework because we're going to really narrow our focus in the assumptions and solution. So this is good feedback to keep in mind. Transition statement before the assumptions. It can be helpful to establish a more specific transition statement before your assumptions. For example, let's explore how we could approach managing dependencies, risks, and roadblocks in a complex technical program. Okay, it's giving the kind of same feedback of how we might set it up before the framework. Sometimes just reminding them of the context and bringing your interviewer back to the question can also be helpful. Assumptions. One suggestion could be to consider a wider variety of possible assumptions in relation to the risk and dependencies inherent in such projects. For example, we assume that the project is large scale and involves multiple internal and external teams, or we're also assuming that the project has high visibility within the organization with upper management closely monitoring progress. With such assumptions, you set more context around possible risks and dependencies. Okay, and I think that this is decent feedback. These may feel a little bit more generic, but it's it's good to assume large scale. I think it was kind of assumed about the internal and external teams, but of course all feedback is helpful. And clearly what this is showing as we scroll back up, it liked my transition statements and my solutions, no real concrete feedback to improve there. And as you saw, the solutions were pretty robust. Okay, let's go into this feedback. So yeah, we we did not ask only yes or no or either or questions. Our questions were pretty open-ended. So briefly reveal three or more concepts. We did that. It just really wanted us to make sure that we were making the concepts generic. Um, assumptions, it wanted a little bit more depth than assumptions and it liked our solutions. Now solutions can be up to a couple minutes and I think each one of those solutions would probably be in the minute 30 category up to two minutes. So very, very robust. If you like this video and you like the AI feedback, consider becoming an early adopter before our paid launch, which is coming up very soon. The paid launch of our AI tool will launch on February 26th in the YouTube description. Click the link to become an early adopter. It takes about three seconds. And in those three seconds, you'll be guaranteed a discount when we launch. But we're also allowing some early adopters onto the platform to test the tool and give us feedback. And you might be one of those people if you're willing. I really hope this video helps.